If you're looking for a long-term investment, the answer may be in the trees, more specifically, black walnut trees. If you plant these trees, these genetically superior trees, take care of them for 30 years, that in 30 years you could have a tree that's, that's 20 inches in diameter, chest high, and if you've grown that tree and, t and pruned it so that it's clear of limbs, you know, 15, 16 feet up, that that tree's projected value would be worth up to $10,000 per tree. Now, you plant 140 trees per acre, and don't have to thin. If you plant on a 20 by 15 grid, that's 140 trees per acre. So you look at, if you've got a tree that's worth up to $10,000 and you've got 140 of them, or say you succeed in growing 100 of them, you're looking, you know, at, at megabucks per acre. Estill Mills dedicated a large portion of his 75 acres in Mickey to growing black walnut trees. He found this opportunity not long after Purdue University developed and propagated what they called the GST, genetically superior trees. The eastern black walnut tree had been, you know, for a couple hundred years or since the history of this country, had been the premier hardwood. Uh, and, and we used to have giant trees with, with um, quality wood, quality wood meaning veneer quality wood. And... Uh, because we had cut the best of trees for so long and leaving the scrub trees as, as foresters uh, and as lumber people will do, we had practiced negative genetic selection so long that we had, we had consumed most of the quality trees, only leaving then the inferior trees to do the propagating, and therefore this tree uh, the future of this tree looked like it was pretty dismal. We're not going to have that quality wood. These are not genetically altered trees. In 1968, Purdue's Dr. Walter Benneke documented the effects of reverse genetic selection and began a search of naturally growing superior black walnut trees. Rigorous screening and testing eventually produced a family of six genetically superior trees. They didn't really develop any tree. They found trees in the nation and then, then brought signwood from those trees to their Martell forest, their experiment forest, and, and planted those, they grafted that, that signwood onto rootstock, walnut rootstock, and, and studied the growth of that to determine, and through that process determined that, that certain trees that they found were just genetically superior trees and therefore they propagated that. So it's not a it's not a hybrid, you know, like we're doing corn or we've developed something. They really didn't develop anything. They found trees in America that were genetically that were quality trees because of their genes, not because of the environment. Most landowners can think of where they've got a half an acre or an acre of land on their property that they mow just because they don't want sprouts coming up. They want it to look nice, but they're not really using it. You could put these trees in the ground and with very little uh, time investment, once they're planted, uh, have an investment on property that's not returning anything right now. Dr. Moore and his family have begun planting trees on their farm near Greenfield. The seedlings came from Estill Mills. For his Eagle Scout project in 2001, Dr. Moore's son Nicholas planted some trees for the city of Martin. The trees are planted in a strip of land along Highway 43 near the city's landfill. Road construction, debris, and erosion made the site less desirable. But with care and attention, the city could eventually harvest a gift of several hundred thousand dollars. And so the challenge that we've had over the last uh, five years, there's no irrigation at this site, so uh, if the rainfall is not plentiful uh, during the growing season and the soil not being uh, very porous, we get a lot of runoff of the rainwater. And so these trees have struggled for uh, lack of water and then also nutrients within the soil. But they have taken hold, and we are seeing uh, growth among the trees. So I think uh, eventually uh, 
although the growth will not be as rapid as we would have hoped for in fertile soil with adequate rainfall, uh, they'll make a, a decent log here. So these trees are not like pine trees where you can go out and plant hundreds of acres and, and just let them grow. They're going to need, uh, the walnut tree has to be cared for in that it cannot compete with the weeds or, or small growth, you know, or, or other sprouts. Uh, and it needs nutrition. And, and if you're going to grow veneer logs, it will need some, some training, some pruning along the way. Uh, rather than just to let a tree grow and put branches on all the way down, you know, close to the ground. But so the, the objective is grow a veneer log. It's, you know, 15, 16 feet without limbs on it. Mr. Mills, his son Kevin, and Dr. Moore emphasize that caring for the trees is not labor intensive. Several acres of walnut trees can be pruned, fed, and weeded over just a few Saturday mornings each year. If a person said, okay, I, I want to buy four or five of these trees and put them in my yard, you know, if that's $10,000 in 30 years, I think you're going to regret that in your yard. Uh, just because uh, it can be a trashy tree as far as the nut drop and, and the leaf. But if you've got a site that is kind of out of the way and you're not concerned so much about the aesthetic beauty of the tree and the, the foliage and, and all of that, uh, you could put walnut trees over there and they'd be making your you or your family uh, money down the road. Okay, you have a likely spot and the time. The question now is, what's the investment? Now we have the gene pool and we're planting our own seeds from our grafted trees and selling seedlings for $2.50. So getting to your question now, now you can plant you know, an acre of trees, uh, 140 trees per acre at $2.50 per tree. Now there's a little bit of cost of planting and fertilizer, but you know, you're looking at three or four hundred dollars per acre now versus a thousand a few years ago or, or three thousand planted grafted trees. After about four years of growth and a little more work, the trees may pay for their own room and board. Black walnuts are considered an exotic food and the hard shells are used for sandblasting. Tons of black walnut shells were used to clean the Statue of Liberty. The nets sell for around 15 cents per pound. What we tell people is that you can uh, offset the cost of your plantation over the period of years by the nuts that are produced. You can sell enough nuts, you know, in the 30 year span you're going to have that tree, you can sell enough nuts to more than pay for the cost of, of growing the tree. From the beginning, the idea was to have large numbers of small acreage stands. Communities with many growers will develop a better market presence, which in turn reduces the cost of harvesting and transportation. And so there you have it, a unique long-term investment and land use idea. We know that there's a value for hardwoods, like the black walnut, the cherry, the oak, either in flooring or furniture. And I mean, you can look within some of the flooring products that we get now, the boards are shorter, there are more flaws in the boards. There's a demand that is there for the, the quality wood. And if it's, if it's been cut out of the, the native forest, I think the way that we're going to bring it back is within these um, purposeful plantings of those native hardwoods and, and managing them for quality wood. But you got a young couple like that in their 30s, and they worry about not being able to save. They just can't seem to find enough money to have a savings plan. And everybody needs a savings plan. So, you know, I tell them, well, don't worry about Social Security. You don't have to have that in the future if you plant some walnut trees. And uh, if you're looking at, at a savings plan, this, this is something they can do. They can find just a few hundred dollars you know, three or four hundred dollars to plant an acre of walnuts, and next year maybe plant another acre until they've got two or three acres of walnuts on some good soil. And if they'll take care of those trees while they're, you know, if they just take care of those trees in a little spare time they have along the way, 
then those trees will take care of their retirement. They just don't have to worry, ever worry about our future. We've got it right there. 